ready to get serious about building content sites and building a profitable business online? Welcome to the Niche Website Builders Podcast. We bring you the latest field-tested tips, tricks, and strategies for building a profitable online asset. We interview industry experts, share customer success stories, and reveal our own experiences working on hundreds of sites to inspire and motivate you to make something happen. Let's do this. Welcome to the Niche Website Builder Show. Today I've got a nice, short, sweet episode for you, which hopefully you'll find interesting. It's uh, We're talking about a keyword research technique um, that, um, or keyword research slash competitor research technique that we've been using here at Niche Website Builders for around about a year now. As I, as I mentioned in the episode, it's like nothing really groundbreakingly new, except that we've kind of defined a very you know, strict process for, 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 for keyword research. And, and as I say, it's something that's worked really well for us in our own portfolios, but really well for our clients too. So We've got lots of like data now behind you know, showing that this kind of this has really worked, been really effective for us. Um, so it's something that we wanted to share with you. We've we talked about and um, this technique on uh, other podcasts. We've talked about this technique. Uh, I've blogged about it over on Niche Pursuits, but like it's not something that we've talked about on our own podcast or on our own blog. So um, I've written a blog up about it now that you can go and grab on uh, the Niche Website Builders uh, website. Um, but also we thought we'd record this episode so that you could um, you can hear us talking about it and and some of the things that that, that we've done uh, you know, using this technique. So um, yes, it's a technique that we call we, we gave a name just because uh, yeah we've defined a process and it's just there's so many steps in the process to, to explain it like it's just easier to have a name for it um, when we're talking about it either internally or with clients so it's something it's, it's a name that we've been using with clients for a little while as well um it's certainly a technique that clients of, of ours have been aware of for for some time now um but yeah we just wanted to give it a name and get it out of there and share it share it with the share it with you guys so um yeah it's called Tomb Raiding SEO. I can't remember if I already mentioned that, but it's called yeah, Tomb Raiding SEO is the is the name that we came up for it. So, um, yeah, I hope you uh, enjoy the show. This episode is brought to you by Niche Website Builders, an agency dedicated to helping people just like you build profitable content sites. Niche Website Builders are the hands-off content site marketing agency you always wished existed. It's run by content site marketers for content site marketers, and they help both investors and individuals alike build profitable online properties. They provide a fully outsourced approach to content creation, link building, and done-for-you website builds, the same approach they use on their own six-figure portfolios. For example, their content packages come with a proprietary keyword research process, are written by in-house native English speakers, formatted using templates proven to convert, and uploaded to WordPress with affiliate links added so that all you need to do is hit the publish button. Check them out at nichewebsite.builders show. That's nichewebsite.builders show and fill out the form to get coupon codes for 10% more content or a 10% discount on links with your first order sent right to your inbox. Welcome to the Niche Website Builder Show. Today, I have Adam with me. Should we do an awkward introduction, Adam? How's it going? Yeah. Yeah, good. Good. How are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not too bad. It's been a while. How's things going? Signature. Signature niche website builder, awkward introduction over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how how things going in general? How uh it's yeah, I'm good, thanks. We uh were literally just talking. I was telling you about my new teeth whitening procedure, which I'm having done. <laughs> <laughs> we get my teeth sparkly white for our Christmas party. Um but yeah, apart from that, things are good. Just ramping up for Black Friday, uh busiest time of the year for us, I guess. And um in amongst all of that chaos, I'm preparing to move house as well. So uh, yeah, it's going to be a busy couple of busy couple of weeks. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, cool. So today uh, we're going to talk about tomb raiding SEO, which we've kind of talked about to clients for a kind of long long period of time. Although we, we haven't really given it that name for until quite recently, we've talked about it with uh, some other people. We've talked about I've talked about it on. Um, Spencer's 
the horses blog on niche pursuits um we haven't really talked about it on our podcast and on our blog so um, i've written a blog uh, which i'll put in the show notes um, which goes through in detail on you know how to follow this tomb raiding seo technique that we've that we've been using for a while we've been using for probably a year now um so we've kind of got some good data now over time to let test to see the results um and it's been really kind of quite effective for us so we wanted to share it with you uh, our audience um explain how to do it um and uh yeah it'd be great to hear you know how it works out for you, for you guys as well um so i guess just a few disclaimers at the start so you know we're not proclaiming that this you know that we invented something entirely new this the, you know although we're giving it an, a name it's kind of it just helps us describe it to customers and to anybody else without having to go into detail because there's kind of a number of steps to it so it kind of helps give us giving a, a, us giving a name to it but you know it, it's not something that we've you know that's entirely new to some extent it's, it's competitive to research but what we have done is look, clearly defined a process uh, for this this keyword research method so you know if you talk you know if you talk about competitor research that could mean so many different things there's so many different ways to do competitor re competitor research it's quite ambiguous about what that what that is and what that can mean so we've just absolutely kind of nailed down a if you like competitor research keyword research technique that we've called team rating seo so that's that's kind of the first disclaimer uh, disclaimer i guess and also second disclaimer is like you know we're not saying that this is the only keyword research method you should ever use ever again going forward. It's just one of many in our toolbox. Um, but this one, you know, we found to be to be quite effective um, well, very effective, actually, um, both in our own portfolios and for our clients. So with that said, Adam, disclaimers out of the way, you know, you know if, if you were just, just describe Tomb Raiding SEO in, in just a couple of sentences, what, what would you say? Put you on the spot. Yeah. Um... Essentially, it's it's uh, analyzing your the competitive landscape to see where you sit in terms of uh, like domain authority, and then from there, uh, basically reading and, and um, pulling out the best performing pages of your weaker competitors and correlating correlating the content that you create to those. Um, and we'll probably go into a bit more detail in a sec on like each of those steps, but like as a high level, we're basically like in layman's terms looking for weaker competitors. See what content works well, and then look into to correlate our new content to that. Yep, cool. And you know, this method doesn't work for all sites, right? It's, it's, it's specific kinds of sites that we that we use this technique on. So, can you yeah yes. go into that? Yeah. So, because of the because of that, one of the steps is basically to lay you out in that competitive landscape based on like your domain authority and domain power. This doesn't really work well for 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 brand new sites or sites with with little to no authority. Where we do find this working well is existing sites that have been around for a long time and they have that power and authority. They've also got a, a really strong foundation of, of backlinks. Um, or if we're working with an age to age domain that has that pre existing authority and pre existing power, and they're already somewhere you know at least a quarter the, a quarter of the way up in that competitor landscape and there's a good selection of weaker competitors below them yeah yeah cool so yeah if we go if we go through the steps then that we do that we take to to do this keyword research i'll say these kind of detailed out in the blog but um you know to, to yes. cover them kind of verbally um yeah you know step one i guess is kind of finding our competitors and how do we go about doing that yeah, so there's a whole a whole host of ways that you can go about like finding your list of competitors. Um, one of the quickest and easiest ways is to use the SEMrush competitor tab. So put your own URL, your own domain into that competitor tab and see all of the competitors that come up there. Now, this is a good and a bad thing because what we normally find is when you put your own domain in there, the, the competitors that show up typically are around similar similar kinds of traffic levels to your site, which is good because you can find like who the competitors are with similar traffic. But that method usually misses out some big competitors. So like if you if your site's getting 20,000 visits a month, very rarely will you see in that competitor list sites getting sites with 100, 150, yeah. 200,000 visitors. So that's like, that's one way of doing it. Another way then is to look at what of those sites that, that SEMRA shows up as your competitors is to pull out some of the, the top performing keywords 
and just start Googling those uh, and making a list of all the niche relevant sites. So you want to ignore general sites or, you know, wire cutter or news sites. You're looking for, if it's in a specific niche, you're looking for other niche specific sites, pop them in a spreadsheet and then go through them one by one to see if they've got a lot of traffic. It's a manual process. There's a, there's no doubt about that, but it takes, it's, it's worth the effort to spend doing a, uh, spending a lot of time compiling that initial list because the bigger and better that initial list is, the better the rest of the process is. So, you know, however you find them, make sure you find as many niche relevant competitors as you can uh, at the starting point. Yeah. And another good way that I found of finding um, competitors is, is if uh, in Ahrefs, so you type in a, type in a keyword um, and I think you go to the t- organic search tab or traffic tab whatever it is i can't remember what it's called offhand um second tab along and uh and on the right hand side it shows you the top 10 competitors and you can kind of go in and kind of work those out and you can kind of go down a rabbit hole so again i think ahs tries to do something clever there by trying to find ones that are kind of similar to well definitely similar yeah. it, it seems to be a mix between similar in terms of traffic levels but also in terms of relevancy because you will find some more big ones yes. in there but generally they'll find some that are generally they'll kind of be around about your size but then if you find some bigger ones you can can kind of then put that one into hrefs and then find their competitors and you kind of go down like a little uh um rabbit hole then of the of the competitors um yeah and the, and the other thing is uh, similar to that is uh, I, I, I do this on ahrefs is if you find a really good competitor and you look at them and you, you see okay well this is the kind of content that looks like it's working really well for us just keep putting those guys back into SEMrush and looking at their competitors. Yeah, yeah. You, you can spend a, a ton of time like doing this partner and it's worth doing like over and over, looking through all the sites, looking at the competitors, putting new ones back in, searching for different keywords, making a new list, and just going around in circles basically until you've got a really comprehensive competitor list. Yeah. Just to correct myself there, I think it's, it's in Site Explorer you need to go to, and you put your. Yeah, I start with my own site, and then you, and then it's the traffic tab, and then on the right hand side, not not a keyword, so in case people go searching yeah. for it in there, like yeah, it's in the Site Explorer part, yeah, and then yeah, once you yeah, you, you can just yeah, you get down a rabbit hole there with finding competitors and putting them in, and then finding their competitors and so on. Um, yeah, there is um, they, they also do have uh, it's slightly different though, but they do have like the, the competitor actual part of hrefs don't they as well which yeah i think that's slightly different as well so there's there's a number of different ways but yeah the key is to find get a bigger list as possible um for sure okay so once we found all of those competitors um yeah what's the what's the next step so put them all into a a list in in excel and then we want to start pulling out key metrics Uh, and these key metrics basically are reflective of the power of the domain Uh, and again all these metrics are third-party metrics, just another kind of like caveat, you know, they should be taken with a pinch of salt, but it's the only data that we've got to work off basically. So we pull out six different metrics typically, and that's um, UR and DR from AHRFs, DA and PA from Moz, and trust flow and citation flow from Majestic. And we put those in, in six columns and then we add them all together to give us kind of like a base overview of how strong each of those domains are just in terms of the domain strength. So we're not taking anything else into consideration apart from how strong is uh, are these domains. Um, and then we basically order that list, the total column, highest to lowest, and that gives us an idea of where we sit in that competitive landscape or, or just on a domain basis. So forgetting traffic, forgetting site age and all that, just on a pure V6 metrics, this is kind of where we sit in that competitive landscape. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think, you know, we use more than one metric because it kind of hopefully levels the playing field a bit, like if yeah. one's kind of a little bit out, but you know, yeah, it's the best, it's the best metrics we've got to work with. Obviously they're not endorsed by Google, like, but like, you know, they're, yeah. they're you know, it's what we've got to work with and kind of by using a number of different metrics, we kind of hope that we kind of get a, a good idea of where the site sits in, in the competitor landscape. Yes. Okay. And then once, Go ahead. And then once we've done that, I guess the next step then is to, Everyone who's below you in that list, I mean, I, and this is a little bit subjective because you can take people who are a little bit above you as well if you want to like build in some aspirational uh, sites in there, especially if you if you actively do a link building or or you plan to do link building in the next kind of couple of months, you probably want to add in some of those aspirational competitors too. 
And then <clears throat> the whole methodology next is, is based on like the, the 80, 20 rule where most websites, 20% of their content is driving 80% of their traffic. The only hard part is when you build a website, you don't know what your 20% is going to be up front. So you end up having to put out a hundred pieces of content only to see 20% of them are driving 80% of your traffic. So we kind of skip that step by then looking at all the weaker competitors and saying, what are their top 20%? They've already done that testing for us. They've already pushed out a hundred articles and we can see using a, a SEMrush usually we'll put each each of the weaker domains into, to, into SEMrush on the pages tab. And then we'll just export every single page that includes the, the traffic number. And we'll do that for all of the weaker competitors. And then we'll combine them all into one spreadsheet in Excel. <clears throat> and what we and then we order that sheet highest to lowest. And what we find then is basically we'll have a list of all of these competitors have weaker domains than us. And these are the top pages that drive in most of the traffic for them. And, and, and that's kind of like the next step is we've got this sheet. Uh, I, there's more to go on to the end of that, but I don't know if you've got anything to input there, Mark, so far. No, I think, um, no, I think, you know, that essentially, you know, you know, I guess, you know, we don't take a specific number of articles from each site. You know, it's it's kind of the ones that are worth going after. So we might take 15 from one site, uh, 30 from another site, 10 from another site, and just kind of, and that kind of helps us build our content plan, right? Yes. So... Once you have that sheet then, I mean, that, that's useful data in itself. You can kind of see high level what the topics are and what the URL structure is. Um, but then we take all of those URLs and we put them through Screaming Frog. Uh, we pull out the page titles and the H1 tags and the H2 tags and the word count for each article as well. And we add that data into the spreadsheet. Uh, and then there's, there's the ton of manual cleanup to do in there because depending on how well you've done that initial list of, of of competitor research, <clears throat> there'll be titles in there that won't fit your specific like site or won't fit in your niche, or there'll be some crossover like that doesn't really fit. So there's a ton of work then to go through manually and clean up that list and only leave the topics that you think are relevant, that you want to include in your site. And at this point, if you're doing any kind of clustering or you want to build out a category specifically, then again, it's a manual cleanup job of these are the ones I want to keep, but, but this is the order based on, on traffic. Um, and then from there, then basically you've got a, you've got an outline, like, you know, that this is a weaker competitor, you know, that this is their title, you know, that it's driving X amount of traffic per month. And you've basically got like a, a, a bare bones blog outline based on their H tags. And you can say, okay, well, we know that this competitor is covering X, Y, Z topics in this piece of content. Therefore we want to correlate when we create our piece of content to cover the same topics, uh, and do a little bit of a better job. I guess one aspect I didn't mention there was when we pull out the word count, we always round up. So our word count is, is always a couple of hundred words higher than the competitors. And that allows us to go into a little bit more depth and usually allows us to add like something that's missing, typically in the form of like an FAQ section at the bottom. Um, and we've got another podcast and another page about FAQs and how we generate those, but essentially we add in some FAQs. So not only do we have a, a better domain, that we have a better piece of content as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That my, yeah, more widely or better covers the topic because you know, if adding those yes. FAQs in, we know that they're that's effective as well. As Adam says, there's another podcast on that if you want to check that out. But um, yeah, like yeah, we've we've seen that to be effective. So yeah, combining that strategy with this is kind of yeah, works really well. I guess yeah, once we've done that, uh, you know. And the next step is kind of doing some sort of correlation, right, against the, the weaker competitors. So what's what's involved in that? Yeah, so kind of touch upon it then is that we've got basically a, an outline now based on the H tags of what the, the exact topics each of those pieces of content cover. <clears throat> and interestingly, like you will sometimes find that the topics that they cover, you wouldn't necessarily match up to the primary keywords. So can't think of an example off the top of my head, but if you look at the primary keyword and you thought, okay, well, I should probably include X, Y, Z. If you look at some of these competitor pieces and the H tags that they're including, you're like, oh yeah, I didn't think about that. Like they'd come out from a different angle or they've included some kind of subtopic that you would maybe never have, have thought about including. And because they've done that, that's maybe why they're doing, they're getting lots of organic traffic in relation to their, their site authority. And you know that you've got to cover that topic 
as well. So basically it's correlating by saying, here are the bare bone structures, here are all the H tags that they cover, AKA we know exactly what kind of topics that our article needs to cover. And therefore it's almost like a fill in the blank for, for the content writers then. Like it's, it's a brief in itself. The brief is here are the H tags or here are the topics that need to be covered. Go away and do your research and, and, and make sure that it covers these topics as well. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I guess, um, you know, we just want to, you know, some of the pitfalls here, we just want to make sure that we don't, what, what we mean by correlating is doesn't mean copying. So, you know, we'd highly recommend changing the title of the article, rewording it, you know, you, you still want to cover the same topics, rewording the H tags as well. You don't want them to be the same um, because, you know, there's a, there's risk that you're going to, you know, you're going to have come across copyright issues kind of further down the road with the other site owner, especially if your site starts doing really well, overtaking them, and um, they might start noticing you and noticing that, you know, there's, there's, there's some similar content. So, you know, you want to, you want to be covering the same topics, but we, we're not advocating copying, uh, like an article. So that's something we should avoid. And then there's one way, there's an easy way of getting around that. It's basically to extract the H tags. And when you're making your brief, don't give them the competitor article, <laughs> just give them the H tags and say, these are the topics you need to cover and you, you go away and do your own research to basically cover those topics. And that way it kind of gets around that then, uh, don't give them the exact H tags, tell yeah. them X, Y, Z, these are the topics, make sure you need to hit all of these uh, and go away and, 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 and write that then. Yeah, for sure. And I, I guess, you know, we, we do try to correlate in some respects to having a similar number or the same number of H tags, similar number of, of images and things like that too on the, on the site. Yes. On the page, on the article. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay. And I guess kind of last but not least, then that's, I think that covers most of it off, but you know, how do we prioritize, you know, which once we've got our big list of articles, you know, how, what do we do for in terms yeah. of prioritization for the, those articles? Yeah, I mean, you you can prioritize it depending on on what the the, the needs are from from the keyword research. Like, say, if you are using this method to build up a specific category, then you filter it first by all the titles that you feel could be inclusive in that category. But but realistically, like you want to start highest traffic to lowest traffic, and that's usually the way that we order things. Is got all that research? It's a big spreadsheet at that point. You've got all the hitch tags in there, the word count, the um, the, the traffic by page, and then we, we saw highest, lowest traffic by page. Um, I guess another thing which we didn't cover, which is important, and again, this is still a manual task, is it's to do with that part of cleaning up that spreadsheet. It's quite often, if, especially if you've got a big list of competitors, you'll find that there's going to be lots of cannibalization in there and duplicate topics, and it's, it's not as easy as just ordering them a to Z and, and look in, you literally have to go through them one by one and make sure there's not a duplicate in there. Mm. And by duplicate, I also mean a duplicate intent. It could be worded slightly different, but realistically it's covering the same topics. That part is really important. Otherwise, you know, if you, if you, depending on the niche and how many sites you pull together, you could end up with five, six, seven articles that cover the same topics sl worded slightly different. Um, so, in during the cleanup process, the sheet is always ordered highest traffic to lowest traffic. And we always keep the one that has the highest traffic because it's, it's the one that's covering the topic the best, essentially. Cool. And any, any quick tips for finding out if uh, some articles have the same intent? No, it's not a quick process. <laughs> it, li it literally is. A, it's, it's, it's a very, it's, it's a demanding process. You have to go through there with, uh, put them in, I hate using Excel for this because the find the, uh, the, the, the find function in Excel, I find horrible, but put it into Google Sheets and do a control and F and, and then literally search for what you think could be related um, to that title. Sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's not hard. It, it's hard, but it helps if you do it all in one go. Like I hate doing getting halfway through that aspect and then going for lunch and coming back because it's, if I do it all in one, it's fresh in my mind. I'm reading each title and then I'm going to the next one. I'm like, okay, I haven't seen this one before. I haven't seen this kind of intent before. Next one. And, and then if you're ever unsure, you, you find two of them and you think these could cover the same topics, have a look at the H tags. And if you're still unsure, 
decide what you think the primary keyword would be. And usually that's pretty obvious because it's usually in the URL or it's in the title structure. And just Google them. Make sure you're in an incognito browser. Google both of them and see what the search results show for Google from Google. If they show up the same pages, then it's the same intent. Google is is, is covering them both. It's covering the same topic, and you want to get rid of the, the 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 one with the lowest traffic on your list. Then. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Anything else on uh, on uh, the technique or the the steps that I've missed there, or that we we could talk about? Yeah, I guess I guess one other thing to just to keep in mind, and I guess this is back to one of the caveats at the top, is is this is great. This method is great if you're in a space where there's where there's lots of competition and they're doing a really good job. This is not great if you're in a very small niche or the competition are not doing a great job. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you if you get to the point where you've done all that research and your list is looking not great, you think, well, this method is is probably not. Either I've done something wrong in the, in the other steps, or this method is not the best for this for this niche or this space or this topic or, or whatever that is. And then you've got to fall back to, to another method. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And I guess we use this a lot with our uh, H domain packages that we sell on the site. Um, that because you know they're H domains, they've already got some authority, so they've already got some weaker competitors. So quite often, this is one of the main techniques that we use for keyword research. Um, for those those packages yes so uh, as i say there's a blog uh on on this um you can go ahead and kind of look at that and kind of if there's something you kind of want to look at and kind of do yourself then kind of go ahead if you don't want to do it yourself and you would like us to do it then you just need to buy one of our content packages and we kind of do all of the kind of this kind of research for you as as part of as part of the content order so um Yep, that's something there. I guess the other thing worth worth mentioning is um, next week is Black Friday, um, so we will be having some offers uh, for Black Friday. Um, so watch out for your inbox uh, if you're signed up to this uh, to our mail, mailing list. If you're not signed up to our mailing list, go to the contact page on our site and you can kind of sign up there. Um, so that's nichewebsite.builders. Um, if you are have been a customer if you're an existing customer of ours or have been a customer in the past then check your inbox already because um we've got some special uh, deals um uh, or uh, early bird deals i would say for um for people that have been customers or are existing customers uh with us right now um and some special kind of packages and and deals that you know aren't aren't available to the to the general public um and then from next week um, you know, you'll be able to go ahead and and uh, buy buy any any of the stuff at a discount. Uh, or, in terms of the content packages, we'll be offering uh, more content for the same price. So, um, yeah, just a heads up that you know, keep an eye on your inbox, uh, keep an eye on our Facebook groups. If you're not already a member, it's uh, one's called Niche Website Builders and one's called um, Niche Website Flippers. The Flippers one is for people who like to buy sell flip sites. And uh, the builders ones are for people that are kind of down in the weeds, getting dirty and strategies and tactics around that. So, um, yeah, worth, worth mentioning. So anything else there to add, Adam, before we sign off? No, I think that's it. Nice, short, sweet one to the point, sharing lots of hopefully useful information that you can action yourself or, like you say, come to us and, and we can help you. We can help you with it. Yeah, if you've got any questions, um, drop us a message. You know, on the Facebook group or uh, drop us a message in the website chat. Um, we've got a chat yeah. uh, bot that you can kind of talk to us on, on, on the website. Um, and yeah, we'll pick up anything or any questions you have there. Thanks yeah. very much. Awesome. Till next time. Cheers, Mark. All right. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thanks again for tuning in. And I hope you enjoyed the show. If you're listening to the podcast version of this episode, please subscribe on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Please rate and review as this will allow us to grow our audience and create more shows like this one. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel and click on the bell to be the first to know about any new episodes that we release. Until the next episode, goodbye.